Welcome to John Cole and I speaking with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet. And John and John, where are we going today? We're yeah. going to Harry, the Hemingway Bar. John, you wrote a great article about a bar that's actually a museum. Um, the guy collected all of Hemingway paraphernalia, including typewriters, as I recall. And um, they went to auction. How many bars in the world are like that? You know, it made me think of the, um, uh, uh, what's the, what's the famous Las Vegas rock and roll yeah. restaurant? Hard Rock Cafe. Or Hard Rock yeah. Cafe. Yeah, those, those are. Yeah, they, they would like to be a museum, but they, yeah. they buy all kinds of rock and roll paraphernalia. Oh, yeah. And, and hang it on the walls. Yeah, we'll get donated or something, but yeah. Yeah. So, did the Hemingway Bar in Paris create that trend? No, I don't think so uh, necessarily, because you you know back in the Hollywood days you had um, uh, the uh, Brown Derby, which you had all these caricatures, and also uh, the uh, the Palm Steakhouses all had those caricatures, and sure. all, well, Sardis had all those caricatures. So yeah. they have that. The, the, Hem the Hemingway Bar didn't exist when Hemingway was uh, alive, as a matter of fact. But uh, to go back a little in history, uh, <clears throat> Hemingway was, for all people like to criticize him, he was one of the staunchest, no kidding around, war reporters ever. And he was there on the front lines uh, with the troops. And when Paris was liberated, the day that Paris was liberated, Hemingway came r riding in on a tank uh, with the American forces. And he says, I was the first one to liberate the Ritz Hotel bar, uh, which one can <laughs> believe um, at the time. And now the bar and the Ritz Hotel at that time, the Ritz had been open throughout the war because it was where all of the German officers were ensconced bivouacked can you be bivouacked at the ritz um and they had a bar there at the time so he and, and they got all the champagne you know going back to 1936 vintages and so forth and so that's the story but it happens to be true um hemingway frequented uh harry's new york bar where he, he went uh, earlier on um in the in the 30s um uh, which is not associated with the Harry's Bar in Venice, but uh, he's, his presence at the Harry's New York Bar is very palpable, um, where they have all the pennants of, of colleges uh, in the United States, including Iona College, where John and I went. Um, so the Hemingway Bar itself didn't really open until the 1980s, and by that time was owned by uh, Jody Faid, uh, is that his name, the... the Sure. Father of the guy who was in the car with uh, the, the owner Stone. of Har Harrods, the yeah, owner uh, of Harrods, yeah, of the Ritz. He, he bought the Ritz, which was a scandal at the time yeah. because the Ritz is such a French institution in Paris that you know this Arab guy bought it. Uh, so in any case, it wasn't doing very well. It didn't have any particular cachet. It was just a Ritz bar, <clears throat> but they said, "Hey, why don't we turn it into the Hemingway Bar?" And they hired a British bartender named Colin Field. Wonderful, wonderful guy. I think he's the best bartender in the world. He just retired two years ago. And he was the one who started outfitting with Hemingway memorabilia. And there's pictures of uh, Papa Hemingway there. And there's um, fishing gear and so forth. And people would bring him stuff, including his uh, Hemingway's uh, son and grandson would bring him stuff. And uh, Kate Moss, the uh, model, the supermodel of her day, uh, brought him a typewriter of a kind that uh, a Remington typewriter of the kind that Hemingway had. So and now I've been going there every time I go to Paris. I cannot resist. and I, I love Colin and I always go there and um, I I have, you know, my card, my business card has my daiquiri recipe on it. So I always send a, a friend of mine in before me and present it with the card. He says, the next guy comes through the door, wants this daiquiri. Ha, fun. You got to be me. Uh, anyway, so Colin left a couple of years ago, retired, and um, he had acquired all, a lot of this stuff himself. He had put the bar on the map. Uh, so much so that the owners could refuse him nothing. And he didn't steal anything. It was in his collection. But what Kate Moss once wanted him, 
Colin to come over and do the cocktails for a big party she was having at her house. The Ritz says, no, we do not lend out our bartender. But then when Colin was declared, um, I think it was by Forbes magazine, the best bartender in the world, they got so much publicity, they said, and he says, I'm leaving unless you let, let me go to that Cape Moss party. So they let him go. Um, so this went up for an auction at Christie's just last week. And whatever the uh, base price was, it made four times the amount in the auction that they had anticipated um, wow. because of the, the cachet of Hemingway. Otherwise, the stuff is just some old Hemingway typewriter and some old fishing tackle and, and an ashtray and so forth. But that, that's how um, resident um, Hemingway's name still is to this day. And uh, he was a great drinker and a great roustabout, but he never act, actually ate uh, or drank at the Hemingway bar. Now, Colin did say that he appointed, when he left, a wonderful woman who worked for him for years. So I haven't experienced her handiwork as yet, but I'm going to go in there and see if she can make a daiquiri. And of course, there's the story of the Hemingway daiquiri which did it have grapefruit juice in it? Did it have sugar in it? Did he put a maraschino liqueur or cherry in it? Um, that's the kind of thing that's nice to debate at the Hemingway bar when you go on the Rue Cambon, still there in the Ritz and you walk, walk through the doors of the Ritz and there's this long hallway and there's a, there is a bar over here and there's a little kind of a bar over here and there's the restaurant. You get to the end and you take a, you take a right and there is this little snug room, which is no bigger than, I would say, the average bedroom. In, um, and there it is. And there's the bar. And it's all shiny and bright and very, very expensive. I mean, it's a, a cocktail that costs you $30, which is no bag of shells these days in New York or anyplace else. But um, we're catching up with them there. So uh, a great experience. And so you should all go to the Hemingway Bar at the Ritz Hotel. And uh, and the Place Vendôme, and drink a toast to uh, Papa Hemingway. Will do. Uh, Will do. That's so another. Uh, I was just going to say it's another stop on my trip to Paris. And we, Johnny. And 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 when when we go to that bar, we're going to say, make it like Marianne likes it. That's right. Yeah. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.